सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली हाउ मच डू वी नो अबाउट अर्जेंटीना एंड डू वी रियली केयर एंड वाई शुड वी केयर नाउ वी नो अबाउट अर्जेंटीना थ्रू इट्स football because many countries may not have a lot of hard power but they have soft power a country like india has some hard power in fact quite a bit of hard power but is also it also has soft power which may, which may be bollywood and which is cricket similarly argentina not such a big major world power its soft power is football so we know argentina through football we know diego maradona we know we know messi but beyond that what's there with argentina that we should bother about particularly now why should we why should we be talking about it if argentinians in their enormous wisdom because voters are always supposed to be wise and and in argentina voting is mandatory you are obliged to vote everybody has to vote every citizen who of 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 the correct age of the entitled age has to vote it's not as if i got 70% uh, voting percentage or 60% voting percentage everybody has to vote by law if those voters once again in their enormous wisdom have elected as their president somebody who would look like a nutcase to it to the naked eye or who would sound like one so look at the pictures this man this man has now become the president of Argentina he will take over on the 10th so Javier Milei Javier Milei is just 53 he was an author and economist and a populist in many ways he made his stardom being a tv panelist and a tv anchor a tv talking head and was obviously rebel rousing and railing against the system you remember somebody like that in india railing against the system sab mile hue hain sab chor hain stuff like that so he's also been saying that everybody is a thief and the state is basically oppressive it doesn't have any right to exist his campaign if you look at his if, if you look at his pictures he looks like a very unconventional political leader particularly particularly for a westernized nation for a quite westernized and not very poor nation 40% argentinians live below the poverty line by argentinian standards at the same time it's a country of 4.6 crore people with a per capita income which is more than 5 times india's per capita income so its per capita income is about 13700 dollars per year and yet the country has enormous problems now this man has risen in this country basically saying the system is fake everybody is wrong that taxation is robbery i am going to stop all this and see some of his pictures he's campaigned carrying a chainsaw why does he carry a chainsaw he's not running he's not like one of those people tough people running for sheriff or mayor of a city which is crime infested saying i will take the chainsaw to the mafia no he's not saying that he is saying on the other hand that i will take the chainsaw this chainsaw to the government because the government is too big government has doesn't have the right to exist i am going to cut this government to size so he has promised to cut his government spending in argentina by 15% of gdp that's an enormous cut and that's going to hurt a lot of people and he has said this up front and yet he has got elected and elected by a large margin in the argentinian system there are two rounds in the first round many people contest in this case three had contested in that round in that round javier milei did not come up first he was second one to come up first there was the incumbent the incumbent is sergio massa he came up first sergio massa is an old peronite now we'll also tell you in a couple of minutes what peronism was or is he got he was first in the first round but in the second round the group that came third that is that is the conservative group group that came third its leader endorsed milei 
So that vote obviously got transferred to him. So in the final count, in the runoff election, in the second stage, this 19th, that was the day of our cricket final, Milei got 55.8% of the vote, whereas Masa, the incumbent, incumbent who's also incumbent, not the incumbent president, but the incumbent economy, economy minister, who was, who was the incumbent party's candidate. He got 44.2% of the vote. So that's a large difference. This contest was between Peronists, that's the outgoing president. What Peronism is, we'll talk about maybe for a minute after a while, but after a while, because Peronism has defined Argentina since the 1940s. It's an ideology that has kept on changing. We'll, we'll come to that. The winner's party is called Libertad Awaza, La Libertad Awaza, which means liberty advance. So he is a libertarian. He's a libertarian, genuine libertarian who doesn't believe in the government. He is described, he also is quite happy to be described as anarcho-capitalism. Now, what is anarcho-capitalism? Is a capitalist who believes in anarchy. So what is his idea of anarchy? He says, for example, among other things, that, that climate change is a lie of socialism. Climate change he calls a lie of socialism. So it follows that it detests socialism. He detests socialism so much that he says once he comes to power, which will be which will be three weeks from now, once he comes to power, he will stop dealing with leftists like Brazil because it's run by Lula, who is a left of center leader, and also with China. Now, that's one of the reasons, one of the very important reasons why we, why we in India should pay attention to what's happened in Argentina. Because Argentina is a country in which China has made humongous investments. Everybody says that the Americans go where the oil is, right? That is true. That's not untrue. But in, at this point of time, it's the Chinese who have surplus cash. The Chinese go wherever minerals are, particularly Chinese go where the rare metals are, rare earths are, and Chinese go where the, where the EV minerals are, the, that is the electrical vehicle minerals are. So Argentina, if you see one side, Argentina is a sort of longitudinal country, goes like this, with Chile on one side. The Chile on one side has large storehouses, the world's largest storehouses of lithium. Then there is Bolivia to the north. That also has a lot, a lot of lithium. And because it's generally the same landmass, Argentina also has a lot of lithium. Besides, Argentina grows something that the Chinese need dearly. That is soybeans. The Chinese consume a lot of soybean. Think of all the tofu that, 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 gets, that gets consumed. So Argentina is one of the biggest producers of soybean, at least one of the biggest exporters of soybeans. So the Chinese have that interest there and Chinese have been cultivating the previous government and Chinese were also supporting the candidature of Sergio Massa, something that Milei was never shy of calling out. And in fact, he accused the Chinese of interfering in the internal affairs and electoral affairs of his country. That is what will make his rise a lot more significant and that is the reason we should also pay attention to. We are paying attention to what's happened in Maldives because we see that Maldives has elected somebody who is not as friendly with us as, as, his, as his predecessor was. So if that's a small setback to us, what's happened in Argentina is a sizable setback for China. Looking at the investments the Chinese have made there, and I will in a couple of minutes tell you about the size of Chinese investments. Let me first describe this anarcho capitalist for you. He says, for example, he says that he will he will stop all, all the deals that have been carried out with China as yet, because these are state-to-state -state deals which have which have no which have no transparency. They are they are opaque. He wants to loosen gun laws. After all, what happens when you when you when you shrink the size of the state, shrink the size of the state, maybe even cut the police by half so people can protect themselves. People need to protect themselves. Cheapest option is to get guns. So he wants to lose gun, gun laws. He wants to ban abortion. Now, once again, a person, a leader, very difficult to describe because he wants to ban abortion. At the same time, he stands against the Pope. And the Pope has the same ancestry as he. It's an Argentinian Pope. So he calls the Pope a filthy leftist and also uses for him an expression which I shall not utter here, right? Except saying bleep, bleep, bleep. Each bleep stands for a letter. So he calls him a filthy leftist and 
bleep 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 he also says that he will pull he will pull argentina out of mercosur what is mercosur mercosur is a southern trading alliance it's a trading alliance of south american mainly latin american states in this group venezuela is also a member although they've been suspended since 2016 now since 2019 mercosur this grouping of south american and latin american states they've been working on getting an alliance or if or an fta or a trading agreement with europe with eu that that is now in jeopardy because milay says that he's going to stop talks on it not only is he going to stop talks on it he's going to pull out of it a lot of his talk a lot of his talk is like jair bolsonaro who used to rule brazil earlier and a lot of it is way to the right of donald trump and no wonder that both have celebrated his victory jair bolsonaro Trump has celebrated his victory, and Trump, Trump in his statement has said, "You, you will make congratulations, fantastic, or something like that. You will make Argentina great again." So exactly the same acronym as MAGA, make 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 America great again. So MAGA is make so MAGA is make America great again. MAGA is also <laughs> make Argentina great again. Now, Donald Trump is right now on the rise. In fact, if you go by opinion polls right now in the key states, looks like he's ahead of Biden. In a major American state in the southern American continent, you have you have Argentina electing a leader of the right, and that's got and that's caused anxiety. Lula has been careful in his responses. He's, he says he looks forward to working with Milei, but on the other hand, the leader of Colombia, who's a leftist, he said that it's a sad moment for Latin America because Latin America, for the longest time, has seen this sharp left-right, left-right contestation, and there it looks like the right has delivered now a sizable punch. How old is Milei? He's only fifty-three years old, and look at uh, uh, look at what he looks like. Sometimes, to me, he looks like a sort of slimmed-down Maradona, or 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 maybe maybe like one of those nineteen-sixties rock stars with long sideburns, etc. Elvis Presley, Tom Jones. I don't know how how many people even remember what he used to used to look like, but basically the same long sideburns, big unruly shock of hair, and as I told you earlier. With the chainsaw, and he does, and he does many other unconventional things that you will not expect from a conventional politician. How, however, we need to understand that he is not a conventional politician. He was an economist. He is an economist of what is called the Austrian school. Now, don't ask me to explain it. I started reading on it, and then it took me in a completely different direction. Maybe, maybe that's a subject for some other day. There is an Austrian school, and there is a historical school. Histor historical school or history school of economics is also called the German school. These have been two old arguments in in European thinking. Austrian school, Austrian school looks at the economics more in terms of what the individual is producing and doing in terms of individual action. So he is an economist from the Austrian school. He's been an author. He's written books at a young age. He was born in 1970, so he's only 53, which makes him younger. then rahul gandhi definitely so he wrote books he did not do much politics he also became a tv personality he became a tv talking head and a tv anchor reminds you of somebody so he was a rebel rousing tv anchor and thereby built a lot of celebrity around himself basically abusing the system the system sab chore hai sab mile hue hain sab ke investigation karao you remember we also have somebody used to talk talk like that unless unless until he became part of the system and i come back i come to power i'll send all of you to jail all of you are thieves etc etc so he is used the same language What is the Chinese connection? What is the Chinese connection with Argentina? To understand China's connection with Argentina, we have to first understand the state of state of Argentina's economy. Argentina's economy is a complete mess. Very often, very often, we don't know what to describe as a complete mess. But uh, but if a country's economy is seeing inflation rate of hundred forty five percent. its currency is declining so fast that its government now has set a rate of depreciation the outgoing president has set a rate of 3% depreciation of argentinian peso every month so it has to decline by 3% 
every month. That's because there is no relation. There is no relation between the value of the peso and, and the market price of the currency. I will just tell you how peculiar the pricing or value of the Argentinian peso is. So 145% inflation, a constantly declining local currency. Its central bank or its equivalent of reserve bank, the central bank of Argentina is out of all foreign currency. They cannot serve any debt. They cannot pay any bills with whatever foreign foreign currency they have because any foreign currency they have is basically foreign currency that their own banks have kept with them kind of in safe custody so they can't take it out and pay their bills with it they in the process have been borrowing from imf just like pakistan argentina is also an imf addict argentina is at 21 IMF programs. The current one is going and if I see the latest reports from the IMF of which I'm sharing some links with you with the description, IMF is already disappointed because all the all the conditionalities that they put, Argentina is not able to carry out and Argentina is going deeper and deeper into debt. See what that does to a country's economy, to a, to a not very poor country's economy. I told you that India's per capita income say, is in the ballpark of 2,500 per capita. Argentina is 13,700. So it isn't such a poor country. You ask somebody, what is the value of Argentinian currency peso? The answer would be, which peso are you talking about? Because there are many different values to the currency. What are these? Official value, blue chip value, the blue as it's called, the tourist dollar, luxury dollar, and then there is a category called tech incentives. How do these work? Let me try and explain to you. It's not that complicated if you just stay with me. So officially at this point today, the official rate of peso to the dollar is 354. 354. If you check out at any point of time, the official value of the peso to the dollar, and then you check Check the market. The difference is anything between 150 to 170 percent over many points in the in, in the course of this year. At this point, if anything, the gap has begun to close just a little bit because people think a new government has come in and they will do something about the situation. Now, first value, the first kind of peso is 354 pesos to the dollar. Now, 50, 354 pesos to the dollar, you will say, all right, 354 pesos to the dollar. So what's the next type? The next type is the blue chip dollar or the blue chip peso. The blue chip peso is 844 to the dollar. What is the blue chip peso? Blue chip peso, blue chip peso is the peso that you can have to buy international bonds, shares, gold, anything that can be used internationally. So in a way, if you want to use the peso as a currency to buy assets which are tradable overseas or assets which have value internationally, let's use gold for example, then then you will get a dollar for 844 pesos. So there is a, so, so there, so there is an official rate. Obviously nobody cares about the official rate. Then there's a blue chip rate. Literally, you can, you can take your, your dollar at 844 to a peso compared to 354, the official price and buy blue chips with it. Then there's a blue rate. What is the blue? It's called the blue. What is the blue? The blue is a rate that you might get on the street, on the backs of stores, shops, or if you have a contact, say, boss, itna mere se le ja to piso, mere ko thoda iske liye dollar la de. Like, so these, these are basically street rates. That is 900. Then there is a tourist dollar. You might think for a moment, oh, is that something? When tourists go to Argentina, they spend dollars and they get a certain value. No, it's not like that. But Argentinians want to go overseas as tourists and want to spend money overseas. Then the dollar they take against the peso, there's a 100% tax on it. That 100% tax makes the tourist dollar or the dollar that the tourists going out of Argentina use at 743 pesos to a dollar. Roughly, roughly whatever the official price of the peso, peso would be, this will be 100% more and Argentinian tourists going overseas will have to pay 100% tax on it. 
Then there's a luxury dollar. If you are an Argentinian, Argentina has had a long history of socialism and that's why probably that's one of the reasons why they've also had a great deal of inequality. So they have a lot of poor people. They have a per capita income almost six times higher than India's, which means they also must have a small number of very rich people. Those rich people want to buy private jets, sports cars, yachts, watches, premium alcohol, jewelry, etc., etc. They get dollar also at a nearly 100% tax over the official rate. So right now, that is exactly 708 pesos to the dollar. And then finally, what is tech incentives? This is tech companies who are exporting. So exporting companies, particularly tech companies who export, they can retain 30% of the dollars they earn on their export. The rest they give to the government banking system, but 30% they can retain in their bank accounts as dollar and can also use it to pay their salaries. That's how messed up Argentina's economy is. And mostly it's a result of populism and welfareism of a kind that the country could never afford all this while. This has become much worse now because of a historic drought, a historic drought which has devastated Argentina's agriculture agricultural exports and agricultural exports are a very large part of the country's economy. Now that we know how messed up the country's economy is, we, we can also see that it did, did not happen overnight. It's been happening over a period of time. That's why 21 IMF bailouts already. So on 18th October, that is just on the eve of the first round of this election, the Chinese gave away another $6.5 billion worth of central bank swap lines, which means Argentina could use this money to repay the IMF. So Argentina would not be caught in a default of IMF loans. Now, this is only the latest. The Chinese started this process with Argentina in 2009. That's the reason I say it's not as if this economy, this economic mess was created overnight. This has taken a long time building. In 2009, the Chinese, Chinese offered the first swap line and then it went on and on and on. Another $11 billion was given by the Chinese. And then it became like a perpetual debt to finance fiscal indiscipline or irresponsibility of Argentina. And that's how the country went on going. The Chinese probably were investing because they knew that they were going to buy lithium against it. They were going to get corn, soybean, also gas because there is a lot of shale gas in Argentina. So, so the Chinese had that interest. Argentina also has a Chinese loan for BRI and the Chinese meanwhile studying Argentina also tells us how the Chinese have used their spare cash and their spare reserves. For example, by this time, by May 2023, 40 countries, the Chinese central bank swap lines are functioning in 40 countries. The amount the Chinese have given out as loans to these 40 countries is 4 trillion renminbi yuan, which equals 500 billion dollars. So that is part of not China's soft power, but that is part of China's hard power. This is what the new unconventional or unusual leader of Argentina, Javier Millet, is now talking of breaking away from. Now, does he break away from it? What will happen? He's also saying he'll dollarize his currency. So there'll be no peso, there'll be the dollar. That will have its own problems. He's also saying I will abolish my central bank. So not only half the ministries, but also my central bank. So he's a man, he's a man with very unconventional ideas. And I do not believe that such an unusual character has as yet been elected by a sizable democracy. What's going to happen in Argentina? We don't know because sometimes when politicians like this come to power, they moderate their rhetoric. Will, will Malay do it? We don't know. But any which way, if you are watching that part of the world, and you should, because a lot of the resources and a lot of the agricultural surplus also comes from that part of the world, particularly minerals for electric vehicles, then fasten seat belts.